Okay, so the largest planet in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. Wait, what? Discovered January 1801? Well, why I'm learning about it in 2022? Oh my god! Oh my god! Ah! Internet historian, incognito mode, space. He's gonna be talking about space. Am I a fan of space? From a distance, I am. I like it from a distance, it's cute. Space. space. What is space? Why Stop. do I have to wear a space suit? That is so formal. Too cold? Not a problem. I'll just put on a jacket. Why does everyone say you can't go faster than the speed of light? It's super simple. Just go the speed of light and then you push on the accelerator a little more. Ah. Yeah. Oh, oh no, not the sun. The water will put it out. Hey Alexa, play Who Let the Dogs Out? I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't. Alexa, do that. play the thing. The no, no. Alexa, play Who Let the Dog. Ah ha ha. Now I will be able to get all the best nudes. Hey, you should have closed your curtains. Ooh, I wonder what's in there. Oh, hey, how you doing, little fella? Oh, I think he's just sleeping. Oh, oh wait a minute. Oh. Aha. Uh -huh. I knew it was fake the whole time. All this and more on this episode of In, In the, the space. 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 What do you know about space? Uh, what do I, uh, not a lot. Okay, let's start at the very beginning. Oh. Not the beginning of the universe. Oh. The beginning of how people thought space was. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, so the history of space. Okay, yeah. So we've got Flat Earth right. Now, there's going to be a whole bunch of people in the comments that go, Oh, actually, they've known that the world Earth was round since the Greeks. We know. We know. Everybody knows. No one thinks you're smart. Shut up. But there were plenty of societies that did think that the world was flat. Yeah, I saw this in a lecture once, or I overheard it on the bus or something. But this is how it goes. You've got, like, this circular flat Earth, right? And then you've got yeah. land in the middle. They call this area the Mediterranean, because that's the middle land, right? It's right in the center. And then past the land, you've got water. Now, all that water is mostly fine. But if you go a little further out, there's a lot more water. Like a shitload more water. These disc maps you see are not to scale. It goes way further out. But if you try to traverse them, what will happen is sea monsters. Right? They'll destroy your ship. Easy. And you can tell that sea monsters are real because once in a while you get some weird thing that washes up to shore. If somehow <laughs> you make it past the sea monsters, you encounter mud. Just mud? It's flat mud. Mm. And it mixes with the land. So you can no longer pass by it you in a boat. So you can try to walk across it, but it's basically like quicksand, you know, you just, just straight into it. But somehow, if you manage to traverse this plain of mud, which is even larger than the ocean itself, it would start to get colder and colder. And eventually that mud becomes frozen and then it turns to ice. And then it's just cold nothingness for far, ice. far longer than all so the So wait, ocean. wait, wait. We go from ocean to mud to ice. Well, that mud was kind of like quicksand, he said, but then it goes to ice. So do you fall off of that? You know, people believe what they believe, and it, I do find it fascinating, you know. I just want to know, if you ever found out the Earth is flat, what is the next steps? What do you do? Do you go off the Earth, or do you just chill and say, I was right? Just know that we was lied to? Lies. Oh, lies! I mean, I don't need proof on that. <laughs> anyway. And then eventually, you come to a big mountain range okay 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 ocean quicksand mud ice mountain and then off it okay i just i want to know what's at the end of this right round the earth and it is the thing that That's at the very it. top holds up the filament which is the thing that encompasses the stars so the mountains go up and then it like holds the star yeah. canopy above it the earth. It holds up the heavens. Yeah, that makes sense. Half of the model is there to dissuade people from trying to find new things, right? Because if you uh, go out on a boat in the ocean, you die. It's the perfect dissuasion. Hey, look, don't bother trying to discover Australia. Human show. I got it. I like to be an explorer. Oh, well, you're too late. There's really nothing left to explore.
if you go out there, you're going to get eaten, then you're going to sink in the mud, then you're going to freeze to death, and then there's also nothing out there. And that's what keeps everyone safe and alive. You tell the same story to your kid in the village to not go out into the woods. Yeah, exactly. Yep. It's the same thing. And that, circling around, is why they tell us not to go to Mars, you see. Don't come back. I do think we'll colonize Mars. I don't want not it. Probably not quite in our lifetime. You reckon? That's well, like he said, it won't be in our lifetime. So yeah, either, even if I don't want it, it don't matter because I will not be on this earth anymore. Well, I probably might be. Maybe. Like, if I make it to that 90, 100, you know, maybe. I don't know. But most likely I will not. And I will not be surprised if somehow, some way, they found a way to go out there and do it. Humans are capable of doing great things and stupid things. So I believe that it's a possibility, maybe. I do think we'll colonize Mars. Probably not quite in our lifetime. You reckon? That's I yeah. think we'll land a person there on Mars in 20 years. Okay, in 20 years, you believe that at uh, least one person will be on Mars. 20 years? Damn. I'm just thinking of how old I'll be in this, like, you know, 20 years. Okay. Yep. You're a dreamer in that story. Mm. <laughs> a lot of the original impetus for the space race to the moon was out of competition with the Soviet Union, right? Then we beat them and everyone went, nah, can't be bothered. Now we're back at war with China. So I reckon space race back on. Otherwise, China's going to stick a big flag in it and say, actually, you know what, Mars? It's always belonged to China. Their flag would look better on Mars, just saying. It'd blend in too much. It already looks like a flag for Mars. It's got stars on it and it's red. It's perfect. That, I, that's hard to argue with. I say give it to them. <laughs> <laughs> and let's be real, <laughs> a lot of people are probably going to die colonizing Mars, like, at first. Mm. They've got the manpower for it. Everyone will just be fighting over the bit where everyone's landing. It's not like someone will be like, well, I'm going to go over to this part of Mars and, like, that'll be my part. Yeah, I think I'm going to stay here where the Twinkies and the women arrive. I think you'd want to sit up at the poles because mm. that's where all the ice is, right? Resources. But also, because of the rotation of the planet and the angle you come in, it's actually more difficult to land there as well. I see. So you would have to actually essentially approach by land. Easier to defend. So you're there on the ice, you've got all your water, mm -hmm. and then you're just picking off anyone who dares to approach in a, one of those Mars rovers. <laughs> the Curiosity rovers, I would presume. That would be super fun. So you're saying if you're going to fight for Mars, is. you'd stay at the top, so mm -hmm. this is mine. Mm -hmm. I like that, yeah, solid. Build a big igloo, big ice wall, tell everyone to get the fuck <laughs> out. That'd be awesome. I love that, yeah. Rocket science. Nothing I'm problem. good at. It's 1960s, NASA, and they can't figure out how to get things into space. It's too far up, you see. Uh, how do we get past the filament into the stars? Ordinary things, you're our best scientist. You gotta come up with something that'll get us there. Ah, what do you got? Ordinary rocket propulsion, perhaps? Mentos and Coke. What's the big new idea? Mentos and Coke. So this is what I've got so far. Um, right. It... it... Ah, a man kneeling on the ground, praying to get to space. I like it. That's a great idea, ordinary things. Let me get you the funding right now. No, not quite. This is a dog. See, my plan a, is... Uh, a trebuchet. <laughs> sort of a trebuchet, yeah. Uh, let me show you my idea. You've heard of CERN, right? Yeah, yeah, they got the big uh, underground thing. Learning something yes. new today. So CERN is basically a 25-kilometer ring underground, powered by gigantic magnets that send particles in one direction, getting them faster and faster and faster, and then they wow. send particles in the other direction, and then eventually they let them collide. Cool. Now, what if you had an extra track? Yes. That went like this. You got something up to 99% the speed of light, and then you just hit the switch, and then capsule goes whoosh, Terminal velocity. Love that. So you're thinking you build up as much momentum as possible on Earth using magnets rather than rockets. Yep. Let's just say I didn't do well in science, okay? But this here, whoa, too much for my brain. 
too much for my little brain. In this instance, or... We're we... going to have to build a bigger one. All right, bigger CERN. <laughs> Got it. All right, massive CERN. Well, you just make the hole in the middle bigger. Oh, Ad yeah, all right. Yeah, Adam size hole, That'll too be. small. The only problem I can see is that we're sending people through the Earth's atmosphere at almost the speed of light. They will immediately explode. I think the solution is to put a dog in it. <laughs> yeah, another dog. Do you know how funny it would be if it was like a Tuesday and the supervisor was out of the office for the day and then he kind of came back, oh, I just forgot some of my papers, and he comes in, and the guys at CERN are all gathered around because they're firing grapes through, through CERN at a big cartoonish brick wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go Dave, yeah. I would love to be at the CERN Christmas party where someone's just like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm going to do a shit in the CERN. <laughs> Because that's what it's called, the CERN. <laughs> this CERN. I would find it very there. difficult not to get in the CERN <laughs> machine, I think, <laughs> if I was there. You got on that blimp. Do you reckon you can get into CERN? I reckon I could give it a go. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. All right, if there's anyone from CERN watching Crazy here, this. Yeah. my boy needs a ticket and one for his lady. I'll email them now. People are thinking about space travel all wrong. They're rubes. Those guys at NASA, I tell you, rubes. They keep trying to send us to space when we yeah. should be sending space to us. That's Wait, not a what? good idea at all. Now, space elevator, <laughs> very difficult. You build the thing space a thousand elevator? kilometers up, and then the tip of it is actually rotating faster than the base of it by differences in like hundreds of kilometers an hour. Tensile strength, psh, whole thing wants to break apart, right? Now, if somehow you could make a big anchor. Wait, how do you draw an anchor? Uh, uh, here. It wouldn't need to be one rope, because one rope is not going to stay strong. Two ropes. Here's 20 meters of rope, and then a big joint. Here's 20 meters of rope and a big joint. And you just do that all the way back to Earth. Love it. Okay, you'll need like 150,000 kilometers worth of rope. But once you're there, all of a sudden you can just pull things across it, right? What am I missing? Oh. Um, there is one thing. Yes. Um, I think the moon moves. So what you're going to end up doing is sort of like wrapping the earth round. <sighs> That's the one problem. <laughs> Otherwise, it's flawless. I've got a solution. All right. There's a rail across earth. Rail. Oh, my God. That's a great idea. That's way better than what I was going to say. Right. Uh, and then you've got, <laughs> got your it. hook you got in it right there. there. Mm. It's allowed to slide through the rail. So in theory, we could like lasso the moon in. Yes. Bring it to us. It's a wonderful life. You, you want the moon? It's a fair amount of helium and also helium-3. Well, we are running out of helium, so that is convenient. There's a pretty good amount of water all over the moon too, so that's why, you know, soon there'll be a moon base and they'll be able to collect most of the minerals that they oh, need. Soon there'll be a... Okay, never mind. Moon base. Oh, they've been promising mm. moon base for years. They've been promising moon base for longer than James Cameron's been promising yeah. Avatar. And honestly, <laughs> sick of this shit. I'm ready for it. You know what I'm not sick of? Add time. Add time. How's this for a scenario? You're with Great your honey, time. and you both have regular size heads, but you have to share a headphone. Well, you I... lose. The correct answer was to get Raycons. Look, she's with someone new, and she's loving the up to 54 hours of battle life, and she can't stop putting them in her ears. The silky rubber finish is rigged for her pleasure. All right, pop quiz, hot shot. It's Black Friday, and it's time to stomp some heads. You gotta win her back by getting her some kind of present. But you don't want to spend too much money, because she might have moved on. What do you do? Well, Raycons. I... The Raycons. They're half the price of other premium brands, but still sound pretty good. Go to buyraycon.com slash incognito to get them. Look, this guy loves them. All right, one final scenario. You're walking down the street, and you see a homeless man. And he asks you for a donation. You've only got one thing on you that's of any value. What do you do? Don't give him the Raycons. Take advantage of the noise reduction? Oh, okay. <laughs> That's right. You have earned the good ending. Where you can enjoy the premium sound of Raycons. Forever. We've got a computer here too where you can go to buyraycon.com slash incognito to get 20% off site wide. Whoa, 30% off holiday bundles. Whoa, this really is heaven. And free shipping to the United States. And over. And over. Alien box. Oh. Say you had a box and you put it on like a little satellite that you were going to send to an alien yeah. planet. Like, what items would you put in there to represent like human civilization? Oh, that's good interesting. Question. Yeah, How that is a, is a good question. Make a video. Well, could you make a video?
a video for the aliens to watch? Could it make it in space or it'll be damaged by then? Or you can write a letter, right? People still do that? People still write letters? Maybe some music. I'll send them a video if it's possible for them to see how this world works and hopefully I don't scare them off. Let's say it's the size of like a caravan. Oh, big. Okay, definitely a person then. <laughs> okay, just like, like a dude, like a dead guy <laughs> or just... Yeah, yeah. They a can dead, be dead guy? That's fine. That's not a bad idea. Like a dead guy who's like kept from oxygen so he doesn't rot. So they've got like a fully preserved... I'll just keep him in a cardboard box. So... <laughs> just dump it. <laughs> oh. Yes. So they... We don't have the budget for something bigger. I like the idea that when they just open up the flaps of the cardboard box, they just... Ooh. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> You okay to, to just <laughs> you got an opportunity to send something out into space to another planet or another place and you're gonna send them a dead body? Th all right. I didn't expect it. I didn't expect it at all. I'm talking about little mini videos of people on Earth and they're talking about just send a dead body over there. Let them examine it. I suppose you'd have a man and a woman. Mm. Man and, yeah. A dead a man and a woman. A, a phone. phone. Like an iPhone. Yeah, you wouldn't have to give them the latest one, because they don't know. An iPhone 5 or a cracked screen. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's not wow. like they're going to start using That's it. Exactly, nice yeah. Fuck it. Gift. Probably get rid of just some trash. You want to shit in the sink while you're at it too? Freeze. Yeah, because you can't dispose of batteries anywhere. Yeah. Bottle of Coke. You know, full bottle. I kind of like the idea that you're... Okay, so you know when you're a pirate, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm familiar. And you're burying treasure. Someone finds it 500 years later and they go, wow, this is not just a historical find. I'm going to be rich. Love that. I like the idea that they find a couple of human corpses, but also half a dozen bottles of Coca-Cola. There's going to be some rich one who's like, bruh, yeah, I'll pay you 50 billion alien pesos for half a bottle or something. I think that's the first actually like really good suggestion for the alien box. I mean, fuck Coca-Cola, mm. but it's also a very popular drink and like a good representation of Western of a, yeah. society. It's, it's everywhere in the world. Mm. Great. And also it, they might be pleased. They're like, oh, this is a treat. Or maybe it'll kill them. But great suggestion. Ah, thank you. Maybe also... Music, I reckon. Music? Yeah, Mozart yeah. on a vinyl, yeah. Uh, another good one, a handgun? Yeah, just to show them that we mean business <laughs> would be good. I think the dead bodies show them you mean business. You're sending off two dead corpses. Yeah, well, we'll rig it up to a tripwire. Don't touch my stuff. Wow. <laughs> Space suit, and why do we gotta wear them? Space. You're floating around. Sweet. Oh my god. Loving it. You're in a space suit. I come floating up to you. I go, ordinary things. Help. Help. My oxygen tank has been oh. pierced. Wasn't there a movie where they had to share oxygen tanks? What? I didn't do anything. Oh, Rocket Man. I'd like to be the first guy to die on Mars. I'm gonna die. Ooh. Oh, but it sucks for you. No, 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 that's not what you say. No. <laughs> oh. We've got just enough time. Quick, we can both survive, but we're gonna both have to get into the same spacesuit. Oh, uh, I've been tricked like this before. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to both squeeze in there. The question is, are you taking the front or the back? <laughs> 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 Uh, <laughs> I'll take the front, I think. I'd rather be in the driver's seat. Oh, okay. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I trust you. I swear, that's just my wallet, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> it's not gay if it's on the moon. It's not if you're trying to survive. At that point, would you want to live? Let that suit do what it do. Where's your spaceship? Is that just floating in space? Because don't the oxygen runs out the spacesuit anyway? Hmm. Anyway. Like legitimately, like you come back to Earth and they'll go, no, it wasn't. It's the moon. It doesn't count at all. It doesn't count. No. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, they could have done it on the moon. Yeah. That wouldn't have been considered gay. And then I suppose... Like, I, we, 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 were, we were lovers on the moon. You know, that's different. Someone shut this man up. <laughs> that's a JoJo reference. Hazwa. See the universe, but we can't travel faster than the speed of light, so you have to go into the cryopod. Ah, the old time delay. Yes, you can go to Alpha Centauri, but it will take a hundred years and everyone you know will be dead. 
Do you do it? Hmm. I don't want to just be mm. like launched into the equivalent of Mars in Alpha Centauri <laughs> yeah. and just be like, well, I'm here and I'm dead. <laughs> I'm fucked. No, they don't just drop <laughs> like, you off. You get to go on like a nice big ship. Maybe there's a nice lady there who's also frozen. Uh, yeah, nice um, little lady. A nice A-list celeb lady who is inexplicably an astronaut <laughs> as in all those movies. Yeah, and you wake her up yeah. early and because and, you woke up early and uh-oh. Welcome. Oh, yeah, um, <laughs> whoopsie, but you don't have another choice, so... You yeah, don't have another friend. choice. Would you do it? Would you want to be one of the crew that goes to Alpha Centauri? I think I would. Mm -hmm. I think it's worth it to go do something that literally no one else has done before. I'm, I'm down. Yeah, I think I would too. Yeah. Would not. If you were one of the first people to Alpha Centauri, you'd just have thousands of things named after you forever the whole planet you get the planet if, yeah. it's, if, if it's your if you're the first one there it's like this is me land you baby <laughs> yeah no governments money is no banned <laughs> and <laughs> i haven't thought this well, through you know if you look at a place like earth every creek every little nook or rock has a name to it they did that like when people first came to australia and i can't help but notice that everything here is named either murray <laughs> or <laughs> Or uh, or after Batman or um... after oh, Batman. Batman. Yeah, Batman like, is yeah you don't know about everything <laughs> yeah. being called Batman here. No, that's new to me. That's oh, there's this guy. His name's like John Batman, and so there's like a Batman Whoa, River. Did he die and, like, at thirty John years Bat old? Damn. And so there's like a Batman River and like a Batman Street. You're kidding. In, in middle of Melbourne. No, <laughs> no way. No. John yeah. Batman. Oh my god, I'm looking him up now. Look, in the past, mm. how long did it take for people to get from England to Australia? What was it like? Oh, like a month. Yeah, a month couple of months. months. Yeah. It's so it's like, eight okay, how long does it take to get to Mars? Years. At right? optimal speed, I think nine so months. months to get to Mars? So what you're saying oh. is that we should put all our criminals on Mars. Hey, it worked once. <laughs> did it though. How come Australia doesn't get a bit of a pass with a lot of its history? That's a fair point. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, oh, the terrible things that were done to the aboriginals. But it's like, okay, but have you seen the average criminal reoffending rates? <laughs> What did you expect? Yeah, it's not like we sent them our best. <laughs> we should... <laughs> I've never thought about it like that, but that's honestly like a really decent argument for giving Australia a pass. <laughs> but like... Yeah, although it means they did all this stuff while they were out on probation. A lot of bad stuff happened back in the day, you know? Just don't let history repeat itself, that's all. Oh my god, the wannabe not be... Now everybody goes, oh, plant. what the heck? Why'd you demote Pluto from planet to dwarf planet? Yes. And... I can't help but agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, they had an idea in mind to make Pluto not a planet, and then they changed all the rules to make it fit their space-based agenda. Celestial identity it politics have gone again. too far. That's what I say. Yeah, exactly. There's three rules for a planet. Okay, you got it. Number one, it must orbit a star. Okay, very good. We're all on board for that, and that's one of the old rules. That's fine. I can accept that. Mm. Asteroids, not planets. Cool. Number two, it must be big enough to have enough gravity to force it into a spherical shape. Agreed. That's a brilliant one. Fine, I'll accept that. But if we see a cube planet at some point, then I feel like we will need to revisit this rule. But as it stands, fine. Yeah, if there was something as big as Earth, but somehow cube, mm. yeah. they would change the rules cube again. Cube Earth. Yeah, now the new rule they brought in was it must be big enough that its gravity clears away any other objects of similar size in its orbit. Bullshit. That is a very specific rule just designed to persecute Pluto. Who came up with this rule? Don't teach a whole bunch of people that Pluto was a planet, then your kids go to school and they're like, no, I don't I don't know what you're talking about, mom. But it was a big committee made up of the deep space state. Mm. And one of the reasons that they essentially made this rule was because, well, Pluto actually has a moon that's almost the same size as Pluto. So Pluto wouldn't even just be one planet. It would be like several planets. But also, out in the Oort cloud, there are probably similar sized planets to Pluto, but hundreds maybe thousands of them. I see. And so actually, in, even in our own given solar system, there would be thousands of them. So what they're running into is a naming problem. Because, well, we can't teach kids that there are thousands of planets. 
Yeah, you can. Yeah. Okay, turns out there are thousands of planets. You expect the kids to learn all the states, all the countries. You expect them to know everything on this earth, though. You think I remember half of that stuff? No, I know what I need to know for living where I'm living at. And Google Maps will help me with the rest. You can? Yeah. Okay, turns out there are thousands of planets, and a lot of them are really boring and far away. Okay, but here's the main nine. Yeah, here's the big nine. Why don't you just call them the big planets and the small planets and be done with it? There's also a couple of objects in the Kuiper Belt, I think, that would suddenly qualify as planets. So Ceres would suddenly become a planet. Ceres? What, what even is Ceres? Oh, Ceres. Oh, okay. Okay, so the largest planet in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. Wait, what? Discovered January 1801? Well, why I'm learning about it in 2022? Oh my god! But that's clearly a moon! It looks like a moon! Well, it's not what it looks like, it's how it acts, isn't it? Uh, it's in the orbit between Mars and Jupiter. Oh, what? Well, why don't we just make Ceres a planet? Yes! <laughs> instead. Absolutely. To be honest, I'm just going to show my ignorance a little bit, but I've never heard a series before. <laughs> in a way, I feel like you've just made this up to make me look strange. Wait, what's make make? Maki Maki. Maki Maki. Maki Maki. a type of sushi. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, okay. It's, it's another planet that's just further out. Oh, I love it. It's cute. I mean, it's a dwarf planet, but... Oh, why does one of them have boobies? Uh, oh, what? Oh, oh. Well. <laughs> There's no need for that. Come on. Eris? Oh, it's a dwarf planet as well. Eris? I'm learning new things here. Well, no more learning. It's time for some answers, damn it. Is it for real? <laughs> Big question time. Ordinary things. Yeah. Are there any aliens? No. All right. Maybe. Is the universe infinite? Yes. It's like a bike wheel. Technically, it's infinite, but you just end up where you were in the first place. That's good enough for me. Uh, is there a god? Yes, and it's me. <laughs> Suck my... <laughs> there, yeah, there we go. Will we ever find out all of the mysteries of the universe? No. What if we already have? I'll, t I'll tell you what it is. The real answer <laughs> is love. <laughs> And that's all you need. <laughs> Space or love, which is bigger? <laughs> and if you could only have one, what would you have? <laughs> oh, love? what about space love? Is that like zero G shagging? Yeah, or where you're oh. on the moon and someone says like, Oh, I, I, I love you. It's like kind of non-committal and they don't really hear you on the radio and you go, What? And they go, Oh, nothing, nothing, over. What if you're on the moon and then they go in to kiss and then they accidentally Break shatter the their free. space helmets? No. Like two people vigorously doing cheers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> moon love turns to moon tragedy. Well, you know, it must happen all the time. The on end. the moon, in the future, we'll all have Raycons. <laughs> so I learned some history today. How much is what was said real i don't know a lot of stuff we get this information from other people and i'm more of a person like if i wasn't there then i'm not 100 percent sure what happened you know unless i was there i i don't know what it is i don't know what it's about i am going based on what some other people told me you know and it's telephone you ever play telephone sometimes when it gets to you it does not make any sense pluto is no longer a planet fine cool I'm already out of school and I ain't gotta worry about it no more. I'm not going out of space. That's not my thing. I, I like looking at stars, but that's how far I get. It's just not one of my interests. Do you like space? Let me know down below. But there we go, Blaze Squad. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you blaze up the like button and we made it all the way to the end of this video. I was about to say planet. If you made it all the way to the end of this planet, go ahead and comment. Comment. <laughs>